After watching this video, you'll be able to define behavior-driven development, explain how BDD can drive customer expectations, and describe the key benefits of BDD. Behavior-driven development, as its name implies, focuses on the behavior of the system as observed from the outside in. This is different from test-driven development, which focuses on the minutia of how the system works inside. BDE is great for integration testing to see if all the components are behaving together. It forces you to think from the outside in. In other words, you implement only those behaviors that contribute most directly to business outcomes. One of the advantages of BDD is that it describes behaviors in a single notation, which is directly accessible to domain experts, testers, developers, and customers. This improves communications across the team. If we compare BDD to TDD, we see that they're coming from the opposite directions. BDD describes the behavior of the system from the outside in. It's looking at the system as a consumer of it would while TDD tests the functions of the system from the inside out. It's making sure that each component is working correctly, while BDD is making sure that they all work together at a higher level. Put another way, BDD is ensuring that you are building the right thing. Do you have the right set of capabilities in these behaviors? TDD is ensuring that you're building the thing right. Does each feature perform the task that it was intended to? The workflow starts with developers, testers, customers exploring the problem domain and collaborating to produce concrete examples that describe the behavior they want. They document these behaviors using a language known as Gherkin. It's a natural language representation that I'll talk about in a moment. Next, the team uses a BDD tool like Behave or Python or JBehave for Java or Cucumber for Ruby to run these examples as automated acceptance tests. As the team works on the solution, the BDD tool tells them which examples are implemented and working and warns them about ones that aren't. Before you know it, you have one document that is both the specification and the tests for your software. Gherkin is an easy to read natural language syntax that uses a familiar given when then syntax. Gherkin is easily understandable by both technical and non-technical people. And, you know, if you're wondering where the name Gherkin came from, the original tool that used this syntax was called Cucumber. And Gherkin is a pickle, and pickles are made from cucumbers. Tools have a funny way of producing funny names like that. Here's how the Gherkin syntax is used. Given some context, this is setting up the context or the precondition that sets the stage for the test. The purpose is to put the system in a known state before the user or external system starts interacting with it. When some event happens, this is the principal action or actions that describe what's being performed. This is what takes you from the initial state to the new observed state. Then some testable outcome or behavior is validated. Then is used to observe the outcomes. The observation should be related to the business value or the benefit of the feature and is used for continuations. Given this and that, then this and that, and so on. It gives you a natural way of adding more context events or outcomes. Let's look at an example from a retail store. These are called feature files or feature documents, and you'll have one feature per document and many scenarios describing this feature. There's only one scenario in this example, but there could be you know, certainly more to cover all the permutations. This feature is called returns go to stock, and this feature is described by the behavior of the system when a customer returns an item that they have purchased. Notice it uses the as a, I need, so that syntax. We use this in writing our user stories. You could think of this as a user story with acceptance criteria, where the acceptance criteria are the scenarios. This first scenario is called refunded items should be returned to stock. It reads as follows. Given that a customer previously bought a black sweater from me and I have three black sweaters in stock, when they return the black sweater for a refund, then I should have four black sweaters in stock. It's fairly straightforward. Your stakeholder should be able to look at this and say, yes, this is how return items to stock works. Or maybe here's another way it could happen. Then you would document a new scenario for the returns go to stock feature. The point is, your stakeholders are actually helping you define the behavior of the system in a formal syntax that you can now execute test cases against. Let me say that again. You can actually execute test cases against this document. 
BDD tools like Behave and Cucumber can consume this document with no further editing or manipulation and, and execute test cases to prove that the system does indeed exhibit the behavior. That will put a smile on your developer's face. This is why I add acceptance criteria to every user story. I use the Gherkin syntax to define the acceptance criteria in the user stories that we write. There's no arguing of the definition of done at the end of a sprint. It's indisputable. The code either does or does not exhibit this behavior. BDD improves communication among the team members, like developers, testers, product owners, and other stakeholders. It leads to more precise guidance on how the system should behave. It does this by providing a common syntax that's close to everyday language and has a shallower learning curve compared to TDD tools. Tools targeting the BDD approach generally afford the automatic generation of technical and user and user documentation from the BDD feature specification. Having a clear behavior visibly results in higher quality code, which reduces the cost of maintenance and eliminates the risk. Finally, with BDD acceptance criteria, you're already converted to user stories and test case scenarios before the actual development. Thus, automating test cases can start creating test process even before the product is tested. In this video, you learned that BDD focuses on the behavior of the system from the outside in. It looks at the system as a consumer of it. BDD uses an approachable syntax that everyone can understand. Key benefits of BDD include improvement in communications, a common syntax, and acceptance criteria for user stories.